Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. It's time for our weekly Mod Collection Demo Shop update. We'll start things off with the Mod Collection. Looking at it today at the time of recording, you only got two options, but this is what it looked like at restock time. Three interesting Les Paul Customs, a couple of interesting finishes, and some exotic ones. Let's go over my favorites. Starting things off here, it did indeed happen. All six of the Racing Stripe Customs did make it to the Mod Collection. Last week we had these three colors. And just as a quick correction, I was thinking the knobs on the Magic Sparkle one were blue. Unfortunately they weren't. The guy who bought it sent me photos, they were just regular knobs. So this week we have yellow, gold, and not even there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with this one. So they called this one Ghost Racing Stripe. And essentially the whole deal of this one is it kind of plays peekaboo on you. Now, I think if you want a racing stripe, you should just have a racing stripe, but whatever, it's kind of interesting. It almost appears what they did is they just sprayed a blue slash purplish finish and masked off this black part. So you actually have the finish around it. Okay, maybe that's just within racing culture. That's why I don't understand it. But I would assume there's another one on the back, just like on the other ones. And I also found out from that viewer's photos that they have the racing stripe on the side as well. So that was pretty cool. Unfortunately, I lost those photos though. So now that you know what to look for, if we adjust the contrast here, you, you can kind of see what you're supposed to be seeing. The knobs just look like the regular ones to me, but the other unique features of these is the middle part of the custom emblem is also supposed to be colored. This one, they, they didn't? Like, you can still see there's like a purple dot right here, so I'm guessing that encompasses that whole thing, but shouldn't that then be black? I feel like they had an interesting idea here, but they didn't exactly know how to execute it on the headstock. But that one sold fast at 4700 bucks Because, hey, it's unique. Gold racing stripe, it's gold. It's got gold hardware, gold pickup covers, golden knobs, gold on the back, and gold on the headstock. Which, to be honest, is kind of strange they have gold and yellow. I definitely prefer the gold, personally. But man, there we go, those knobs look blue again. It must be reflecting something in the room. I can't really say the yellow one does anything for me. It doesn't pull off the theme as well. And that's probably why it's still sitting in the shop. But now for the one I was contemplating this week. 4,000 bucks, but look at it. We have no F-holes on a 355. We've got the Veritone circuit, witch hat knob, selector switch, TP6 tailpiece, humbucking pickups, block inlays with a dark fretboard, and then that headstock doesn't have a custom emblem and has black tuner tips. I really wish this thing would have had black P90s because then I just would have bought it. So in contemplating this, I flipped it around and then saw, oh, well, if you don't have F-holes, you got to get into this guitar somehow. So they have this back control plate made out of a perloid material. So I was trying to figure out what on earth is this? They call it a 2018 355. Prior to that, I was trying to see what model is this? They don't make a 355 within Gibson USA today, outside of the Murphy Labs division anyways. They've got the 345s, the 355s, and figured and non-figured, the 339s, which are small body 335s, the satin finishes, exclusive finishes. But the only thing that popped up for a 355 is a Chuck Berry, which I'll be reviewing soon. And then like the custom shop reissue in blonde. But all those had F-holes, so I was just really confused. And even when I search up 355s from 2018, I don't find anything exactly like this. So A, they either put a new veneer over top to get rid of the F-holes and then cut that plate in the back, or B, this is just something weird that got more modified than we even know. And that's why I was drawn to it, because it was just like nothing I've ever seen. I think a black stinger on the back would have looked pretty cool on this one. But with all those unknowns of what this even started life as, at $4,000, add in the fact that it's not an ebony fretboard, it's actually rich light because it came from that era. In my opinion, it was more like a fancy ES333 or a Lucille or something that got converted. So I decided to let someone else have that. But next up, get this finish. It's really hard to say. Pearl Pull Destiny. <laughs> you know, play on words of purple. Last week we saw a 335 done up like this in what they called vintage black light. It kind of had a purple and red hue going on. This thing's being flipped on reverb so we got to see some in the flesh photos. Honestly, uh, that doesn't look as good as I was hoping it would. Like it's got that whole purple pearlescent shine over top of it and then they just have the regular red. I'm guessing, you know, in person this would probably look a bit better because you can kind of see that phenomenon right here. But there's definitely some angles where it just looks red and then you get some half and half. It's a cool guitar, just not exactly what I was hoping it would be. But nice that we do have the headstock like that. All purple. 
But this time it looks like they improved upon the finish by making it a little bit more heavily purple and used some perloid plastics to really make this pop. They did the headstock again and it was a full on refinish, but essentially all they're doing is overspraying translucent purple sparkle on it. So this model brand new is $2,000 today and they're asking a $500 premium for that refinish. I think that was pretty fair for an end user. Then check out the studio, listed as Deep Forest Green. I'm a big fan of dark green color, so this with the black hardware really works for me. And instead of just being a top refin only, they actually went a little bit crazy on this one. I never realized this just now. They painted the heel green on top of just the back of the body. So sometimes in the demo shop you find top refins only, and then there's like body refins only, and then full on one. So this one kind of bridges that gap. You've got the green body now with the green heel. I'm guessing what happened is when they were masking this off, it didn't mask off correctly. So they're like, oh crap. <laughs> Let's just spray it a little bit more green. However, double green stingers on this would have been really sweet too. But the black neck with the green and the black, that's an awesome studio. Priced at 1600 bucks. Sadly though, you do not actually get a hard shell case. They stole that from you in order to do the finish work. But hey, how do you guys feel about Big Red? I was contemplating this one because I fell in love with the wood grain. It's not super exotic but it's unique it's very nicely paneled and on top of that we've got the red pickup rings right here then we got a golden tp6 tailpiece they read out the knobs the back's all red with some interesting wood grain and get this they even did the widowed like treatment up here with a red gibson mother of pearl logo so this has just all been sprayed over in red too and then you get the red truss rod cover all for 3100 bucks that was definitely fair but then we have satin amber cola 2800 bucks was an absolute steal for this thing, if you like the satin finishes. They look great in photos, but sometimes they feel a little bit cheap in person. But that looks like a single ply tortoise shell pick guard on this, with those ambered out knobs that I loved when we unboxed Bronze Burst last week. They've got the really aged hardware on this. This just seems like a heavily played guitar that might even be vintage. Because even look at the headstock, it's all yellowed over too. But absolute steal at $2,800. That's easily a $3,500 guitar. Then continuing on with our F-Hold friends, for another $3,100 we had Cash Money Pearl. It's kind of like a seafoam green s color, but it's got the figure top so it looks pretty nice. Dirty fingers in our bridge that's uncovered and then just a regular covered neck pickup. The back had the same phenomenon going on. Now you might be wondering, well, why is this part dark green and this is light green? It's because 335's, their top layer on the back is maple, whereas this neck is mahogany. Mahogany is a darker color wood, most times, and maple's brighter, so that's the exact same finish. It just appears different on the different woods. We even had the green misted headstock here. If you dig light green guitars, that was a must have. So overall, a pretty solid selection from the mod collection this week. Nothing that really shouted, you must buy me though. But within seven minutes, almost all the listings were gone. So they definitely spoke to other people. So let's swap over to the European demo shop. There's roughly 15 new offerings that you can see here. We're just gonna go over my top favorites. Starting with the best one, Bull It. Green. Is that how you're supposed to pronounce that? Because that's not how we spell bullet, but <laughs> it's interesting. Maybe it's like bullion mixed with bullet. Bullet green. How about that? I might be adding letters in there. Anyways, get a load of this thing. Dark green finish. It almost appears it might have a slight metallic nature to it. Pink pickup rings, okay, I don't know about that, but then you also have the mother of toilet seat pick guard, but look at that, peace knobs on this thing. From, you know, the 2014 Les Paul Peace series, you've got a metal switch tip on that, but what really made me fall in love with this one is the back. That finish mixed with the mahogany wood grain and how it sinks into it, it's likely a satin finish. That looks fantastic, it reminds me of like a deep lush forest. Then you've got a similar thing going in on the neck, but it's a little bit darker in color. So I'm not sure if that was refinished or not. It is stamped modified, so I guess maybe they're trying their hand at that. And if this isn't a satin finish, this started life as a satin finish model, so it didn't have the grain fill. So maybe that's why we're seeing that. However, I think the effect is awesome. But after value added tax, a little bit more than 1425. Check this out, Vintage Sunburst 335 Base. How often do you see these things? I think they're officially known as the EB2, if I remember correctly. They don't get talked about much. I honestly didn't even know that there was a recent reissue of this. But yeah, somehow it ended up in the Netherlands. Which, by the way, 
the European demo shop is only for the Netherlands and France. Those are the only two countries that can buy from them. It's just fun to look at them. Then we also have, hey, a BB King Lucille, like we were just talking about. These things do not have the F-holes, but they're fancy like a 335, and they've got that cutout on the back. 4000 for one of those over there, with all things included? Not a bad deal. Kind of a similar story with this, a double neck over in the Netherlands demo shop, in white on top of it. And judging by our serial number, it's from 2017. But as far as the best deal this week, it's gotta be this SG Dark 7. We've seen a few of these within the USA lineup, and I'm always sad that I miss them. But this thing's sitting over there, I mean sure, it's got some wear and tear. But this is just a fantastic deal for someone who lives outside of the US, because you gotta remember, you got import duties and taxes and stuff like that to even get one of these outside of the US, if you can find somebody that's willing to ship it out. So all things considered, everything in there for $21.50, great deal. And then lastly, we have this classic tee. It might just be their photo setup, but that top is interesting in a good way. That is if you can live with these marks on the back of the neck. Now it's time to hop that plane, get back to the US for the Gibson Nashville demo shop. Honestly, no unicorns this week, but there were a couple of interesting ones we can talk about. Starting with this Les Paul tribute. I'm not sharing this guitar to share it with you. I just found it hilarious how it ended up here. I mean, A, it's got pretty decent figuring within the neck. So that's actually kind of cool to see on these tribute models. But look on the side. Somebody really botched that pit guard installation. They're like, ah, crap, we need to move this. So they had to fill it in. And that's how it ended up here for $1,200. Next up, 50s Les Paul Standard, another one that came in here due to a defect. Can you guys see what it is? Oh, it's this giant crack running down the back of the guitar. Now, it's not an actual crack. That is just a seam line separation showing. Like, it's not completely separated. It's just that the lacquer has sank into it. I guess it's also possible, like, somebody accidentally slipped with their knife and cut this guitar. But I'm guessing that does not look anywhere near as bad unless you're trying to see it in the light. However, I am questioning why they didn't give this thing, like, a custom finish to, like, fix that. Because at 2200 bucks. Say, you might as well wait for a cleaner one. We had one of those three pickup ES335s. You don't see those very often, but 5200. <sighs> I think that's going to sit in the shop for a while. Because we reviewed the satin rat rod pinstripe job, which is a little bit more unique than that guitar. I've got it cheaper on my website, by the way. But Gibson's price is a heck of a lot cheaper than this guy's 14000 But next up, we had two of these in the demo shop this week Les Paul Studio Ebony. So this one looks like this and was still available at the time of recording, but then this one sold really quick on Tuesday. But this one was listed as Les Paul Studio Dark BH. Buckethead? Nah, probably not. Cause there's no kill switches on this thing, but it's all blacked out. It's like Les Paul Studio spec'd, but it reminds me of like what Guitar Center likes to do. They black out the inlays, they black out the Gibson logo. And then really zoom in on this area and you can see it's got black binding too for a studio. That's really rare. And this thing was made very recently. So that tells me this is a limited edition dealer exclusive guitar that's either out already that I didn't know about or is coming out soon. And hey, there we go. I found it. I guess it's a musician's friend exclusive. So they're brand new 1600 bucks. And the fact that you get the binding makes those a great deal, but I'm guessing that's a rich light fretboard. Yes, indeed, it's rich light, and you don't get the hard shell case, it's a soft shell case. Honestly, I'd rather ditch the black binding and get my hard case, but hey, I guess these things exist. Do you guys want to see a review and demo? Personally, I think it's cool, but not quite different enough from the other ones that we've already reviewed very recently that were Guitar Center Musician's Friend exclusives, such as the Flying V Mirror or my SG Standard Dark. This next studio, yeah, they gave it zebra pickups, but I wanted to feature it because of this. We've seen the mismatch, the back plates on some of my review pieces, but this one, they did it on purpose. You got cream and black, and that's playing off of this theme, cream and black. This Les Paul Custom was really interesting. Available at 3,900 bucks, they put one of these big fancy Vibrola units on it. Which, in and of itself, it's not all that special. The demo shop does this quite often, as does the mod collection. However, did you guys see what makes this so special? This is hanging off the side of the guitar. Generally, it's mounted to the top of the guitar. And that's why Les Pauls don't traditionally get this style. 
So they had to cap off the original tailpiece here, but if they would have installed that correctly onto the top, it would have hit into the bridge. So they had to have done something here, like added a block of wood to even make this fit on here. So if somebody who watches the show bought that, I'd be really curious to see how they installed that. Because you can even kind of see what I'm talking about right here if you really zoom in. This Les Ball Classic at 2100 bucks was just beautiful. Really cool wood grain. And then they matched it up in the back. Love all the rings. It's very hypnotic. Excellent example. And then as far as what sold, a couple other exclusives in here. So we had an Epiphone in the Gibson demo shop. <laughs> yep, that's happened a time or two before, but this is one of those Epiphone casinos made in the USA, if you're wondering why it was $2,400. We've got reviews and demos on those if you want to check them out. This was a fantastic top on a standard 60s. I can see why somebody paid 2400 bucks for it. Then we had one of those CME exclusive double cut junior bases, which I think 800 bucks was how much they were brand new, but that is a custom finish. I'm not sure they make those anymore. I could be wrong on that. But hey, CME just recently announced two new colors on the SG standard base, and it looks fantastic. I love it. It's awesome. So to see one of these in the demo shop so early, this could have been a potential prototype that just didn't quite have the color right because that's happened before. Had I been here for this, I probably would have picked it up just so I didn't have to wait through the pre-order games. Those are really cool guitars. Yeah, here's their Instagram post. I knew I seen it. So here's the green one. That looks great. But the blue, mmm, that's delicious. <laughs> I would like to review one of those, but in my experience, it's really hard to get a, you know, a reviewable deal from CME on their exclusive colors. That's why I've never documented their guitars before. But hey, check this thing out. Not a lot of information at this time, but it looks like a 24 fret black SG standard. That is quite sharp. I would be interested in maybe reviewing that as well. I mean, come on, CME, just send me one of these. My name is literally in the photo. <laughs> I'll be curious to see if we see all the other colors like shell pink and stuff out of the SG bases because they already had the SG standards that were theirs. But for our last two this week, yeah, it's just a nice Les Paul Plus. I particularly like this top, even though it's pinstripey, it goes down, but I like this right here. It's just something that breaks up the monotony of all the straightness. The rest of the guitar is built to 2015 specs, so you either like that or you don't. And our last one, similar story to that other one. 58 Mahogany Explorer Custom Shop just has some nice wood grain ringage in it that you don't normally find too often in an Explorer. Alright Troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed this week's recap. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.